Welcome to Springdale Today. I'm Rick Schaefer, Communications Director for the Springdale School District, and on today's program, we're going to look at a teacher at Bayar Elementary School whose influence has gone thousands of miles. We're also going to look at the Bread of Life, a great way to give back to the community of Springdale. And we've got a special visit from a member of the Arkansas Department of Education's career education staff. All that's coming up. Remember, it's now. It's Springdale Today. At Bayari Elementary School, they were asking, wherefore out there, Romeo? You know why? Because their teacher was gone. It's Romeo Gill. He works at Bayari, and he's been at Afghanistan. You're going to enjoy this special feature on a special teacher at Bayari. That man has been one of the hardest working people uh, around from the day he walked on campus. That's one thing about uh, Romeo is when he knows what to do, he'll, he'll go and get it done without having to be told to do that or be asked to do it. To do the work he does here and through the military, you have to have that gene, you have to have that uh, attention to detail, and he certainly had that from the, from the minute he walked on campus. He was really nice and kind. He loves the kids. He, he wants them to do things right. He just doesn't, he doesn't want them just out here playing like he wants them to do things correctly. They come and, and they say, we want to, I want to be like you, you know, and I have to correct them a little bit, but they'll say Army guy, and I'm like, no, I'm Air Force, but, the, but they always say, you know, I want to be just like you, or I want to do what you're doing. I mean, he doesn't talk down to the kids or anything. He likes all of them, so I look up to him for that. The kids enjoy him. They were looking forward to him coming back. They missed him greatly. And um, I felt bad for my, the sub that was taking the spot because the kids, every time we mentioned him, they'd be like, oh, when's he coming back, you know? But um, the kids really missed him a lot and they enjoy having him here. When I find out he was in the um, army, I almost cried and said, um, I thought he was not gonna teach us anymore. They miss Mr. Gill a lot, you know? Um, they would ask, you know, where's he at, where's he at? And so finally, you know, they started understanding that he is going to be gone a while and that he's, the work he's doing is very important. I was gone uh, for about three months. I was in Afghanistan. I am an A-10 crew chief and we basically maintained the safety of the aircraft and uh, kept it flyworthy. You know, he works on the planes. He says that when the plane's on the ground that's his baby and then when the pilot flies it it's his baby then. He was able to take a flag and actually put it in the plane and the plane you know, flew that flag in a mission actually it ended up being a combat mission. So we're going to frame the flag and the certificate and so it'll be a permanent reminder of Mr. Gill and what he's done for us. It was great. The school supported by uh, sending a care package. Well they sent two care packages and just upon request uh, I said can somebody send some Cheetos and they sent like four bags of Cheetos. Every student wrote him a letter and he has a little still he kept them. He said he read every one of them when he could. Uh, despite working 12-hour shifts. I read through every one of them, every single one of them, but all of those were inside that care package. Seeing him come back and the kids, uh, when I first got here, they noticed that I was new, and they all they all I asked was, where's Mr. Gill at? They kept asking where he was and when he was going to be back. The kids did miss him, and that was evident when he came back, because they were screaming and hollering and, you know, happy to see him. I'm glad that he's back and that he was taken care of over there and nothing happened to him. To have a role model like Mr. Gill for our kids to look up to, you couldn't ask for anymore. He's a great guy and we're so glad to have him. Even though it was tough doing that and getting used to that schedule, I would do it all over again. What a great gift to Bayari is Romeo Gill, a man who's given back to his country. Now we're going to look at giving back to the community. Andrew Armstead's got a visit with Bread of Life coming up next. To the kid who? To the kid who? To the kid whose parents are divorced. To the kid who gets bullied. To the kid who pops pills. To the kid who? To the kid. To the kid who is alone. I want. I want. I want you to know. Suicide is the third leading cause of death for young people ages 15 to 24. And I don't. You don't. We don't have to contribute to that. You are not alone. You're never alone. Suicide takes the lives of mothers, sisters, sons, friends. And they won't make it to 22, 17, their wedding, 15, 
to the kid who's watching this video. I've been there. I've been where you are. And I promise. I promise. I swear to you, it gets better. Suicide affects more than just the victim. It affects your school. This community. Your family. To the kid who's watching this video. Don't lose hope. If you or someone you know is contemplating suicide, remember. It's okay to ask for help. Emma Street has long been the heart of Springdale, Arkansas and dealing with the heart and also hunger issues is bread of life. Watch this from Andrew Olmstead. I'm Andrew Olmstead with SBS TV and today we're here in downtown Springdale at the Bread of Life and we're gonna go see if we can help out some community members. So, let's go. This is the Bread of Life. It's an outreach mission of the First United Methodist Church here in Springdale. We currently serve about 200 families per week uh, by providing uh, necessary food, for three days as well as distribute USDA commodities to those in need. Today you'll be helping someone package a grocery order for a family in need and we'll partner you with one of our ladies so that you can see what each family will be receiving. So then what are we doing right now? Well these are the bags that we use to fill the orders. We, uh, put the, we put the food in here and we're needing some on this side because we've run out so we're going to take them over to this side and I'll show you where we go from there. Okay, sounds good. Here we go. All right. So what we have here uh, is food from the United States government. That's called USDA. What we try to do is uh, give enough food for the family for three days. So that has already been done. Now we go down the aisle and pick out the rest of the stuff. I think I have to. Or, <laughs> so, now our next thing is to roll it out. Okay, so could you explain all this to us uh, once more? This is the area where we divide the products that we are able to buy or uh, are given or we get through other agencies and we subdivide them so that we can serve more clients in a, an equitable way. And it's everything from meat products, such from uh, specifically, uh, these are from Tyson's and, and foods. And we have things that we get at the United Way, which are we pay a yearly fee, but we go there and we basically shop with certain limits and certain uh, criteria. And so we have lots of things like feminine products, uh, napkins, um, rice, beans, eggs are sometimes given to us by uh, the food bank uh, on our uh, price list thing. And so we, we just have a variety of sources that we try to bring together to serve our clients in many ways. What are you doing right now? We're going to go ahead and make some eggs right here. As you can see on the table, what we're going to do is we're going to um, package them and cut them in half. So that way, uh, no one takes too much home. And this is all donated. So. Okay. okay. You want me to help you with that? <laughs> right here? All right. And the one that needs this. Okay, so there you guys have it. Today we help fill out grocery orders and stock up on supplies. And with SPS TV, my name's Andrew Ronstead. Great feature, Andrew, and we appreciate the work of Bread of Life. Coming up next is a special interview with David Fisher about some changing aspects of career education in Arkansas. Welcome to the ACT. The ACT is a college entrance exam required by most colleges and universities. It's the key to your future. 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 Oscar, ready? Yes, sir. Take the ACT exam and open the door to your future. Talk to a counselor today and get to work, Arkansas. 
Career education deals with a lot of aspects of young people's hopes and dreams when they leave high school and eventually higher education in the state of Arkansas. David Fisher deals directly with communication, a quickly changing field. You're going to enjoy this visit with David Fisher. Welcome to the administrative segment of the program. Normally we have a Springville administrator, but today we have a special guest. He is Dave Fisher. He's from the Arkansas Department of Career Education, and specifically, you love the field of communications, don't you? Absolutely, Rick. I'm with the uh, arts audio video programs across the state, and uh, just delighted to be here in, in Springdale. Of course, we have three television programs, one at Harbor, one at Springdale High School, and you now have a new district level television program, mm -hmm. and I always enjoy coming up here and seeing what's happening at Springdale. And when you come to Springdale and take a look, what do you look at? What do you look for? I look at what the programs are doing for the, for the students. I look at the career paths that our students are, are getting preparation for. Mm -hmm. You know, as, as we all know, the jobs are changing. Mm -hmm. The jobs we have today won't be here by the time our students graduate from high school, mm -hmm. graduate two years, four years of college. We're going to have to be planning those basic foundation skills of technology and communications and then let the students figure out the path they want to go down and, and what they want to spend their, uh, their lifetime doing, the different careers. And of course, they're going to have a variety of careers in the future. You know, guys like you and I, we have pretty much had a, a single career, a lot of different facets, mm -hmm. but that's going to be a thing of the past. Our children, our grandchildren, multiple careers, and we've got to help prepare them for those multiple careers to be prepared for whatever happens. Make plans for what they would like to do, mm -hmm. but be prepared for anything that comes along. When you get into the area of communications, you do have to kind of broaden your horizons because if you're too specific, that might disappear someday. Absolutely. But if you have a broad education, you're pretty well equipped, are you not? Absolutely. And, and you want to have that broad foundation to be able to work with print, to be able to work with digital, electronic media. If you can communicate, if you can tell a story, mm -hmm and you've got those skills, if you understand the basic concepts of technology, you can acclimate yourself to any brand or any type of technology. And our, our young people today, give them a few minutes and they can make it run. They really can. And, and you tipped and touched on something, and it doesn't matter what business you go into, whether it's communications or anything else, you've got to be able to tell your story. You've got to be able to communicate. Absolutely. Telling the story is really it. Uh, here in Northwest Arkansas, our television programs in the high schools and in the colleges are really growing. Also, photography and especially, you know, at, at one time, photography was a camera and a dark room. Mm -hmm. And then we went to the camera and the computer as we got into digital photography. Now, we've even gone so far past that. We're still using the camera, but now we're using all of the visual arts. So camera programs, which are very popular in both our high schools and our colleges here in Northwest Arkansas, are really expanding and they're encompassing all of the visual arts. Mm. And, and that's really what we see in television, in film, in photography, in all of the, the media programs that we have, even journalism. Everything is getting wider and it's getting deeper. Mm -hmm. When you look at, because you're looking at these TV programs and other programs obviously associated with that, uh, television in the scheme of the world history or American history is still a relatively young industry. Oh, absolutely. But it's, it's changing so fast. Where do you see TV going in the next few years? We're always going to have visual information and entertainment. Mm. Our future is definitely going to what you can hold in your left hand. Mm. You're going to be able to hold it in one hand. It's going to be wireless. It's going to be extremely fast. It's going to be extremely accurate. It's going to be extremely efficient compared to what we've known in the last few decades. Mm -hmm. Everything, we are going to be able to access the entire world in, in one hand. We already see that now with our young people, a smartphone, an iPad, and we're just at the threshold of, of new technology. 
But no matter what the technology, you're going to have to be able to communicate. You're going to have to be able to effectively tell a story. And that's those, that's those skills that we need to build. And at the same time, work ethics, work etiquette is something everybody needs to know. Teamwork, mm -hmm. being able to problem solve, critical thinking skills, working together to solve common goals. Those skills have to be taught. They're, we don't have them naturally. They don't come as a second nature. Just like the technology skills, we have to teach those 21st century workplace skills. And that's what we're trying to do in the Department of Career Education, the Department of Education, the Department of Higher Education. We want our Arkansas young people to be prepared for great jobs that we want to attract to Arkansas. And I love what you tell us talk about storytelling. You're thinking, yes, we've got the world in the palm of our hands, but when we go home and want to relax and sit, we want the biggest picture we can get. So you've got the smallest picture, you've got the biggest picture. Somebody has to provide the information that you're watching on the picture. Right. And America has been the provider of both entertainment and information for the world. And we want to continue being that leader providing entertainment and information to the world. Certainly every country in the world has their own music, their own art, uh, their own entertainment. But America has for decades and will continue in the future to really lead the world in entertainment and in information. And that's where lots and lots of jobs are for our young people. Good jobs, good paying jobs, with a solid future. And that's why what you do is important because you don't just come to Springdale. Obviously, you do this all over the state of Arkansas, so right. this state is training people for a prosperous future. Absolutely. And I spend a lot of time in northwest Arkansas, not only Springdale, but Fayetteville and Rogers, Bentonville, Salem Springs, Eureka Springs. Northwest Arkansas really embraces the new media technologies, mm -hmm. probably you have more television, more film, more photography programs here in Northwest Arkansas, both at the secondary and the post-secondary level than any other part of the state. Great programs, students who are interested, who see the job potential. And of course, you're in the Northwest corner of the state. You have the Missouri market, you have the Oklahoma market, in addition to the, the many great jobs available right here in Northwest Arkansas. Very good. When you come to Springdale, we're a little prejudiced up here. We think it's a pretty good program. This is what we do. But uh, when you look at Harbor and Springdale High School and this new program in the district, what are you seeing? Uh, what are your observations? One thing that, that Springdale is leading the state in is a regional advisory council has been developed. And we want to use this advisory council as a model for the entire state. And Springdale really led the effort to bring in the other high schools and the other colleges in this area to come together and to invite business and industry to come in mm -hmm. and for business and industry to tell educators, both our high schools and our colleges and universities, the skills that they need, what they don't see in the people that come and apply for jobs with their companies, what we need to be teaching and training in high school and in the universities. And the uh, Northwest Arkansas Arts AV Regional Council is working very, very well. It's working so well that we want to use this as a model for the entire state, and not just in the arts audio video, but in business, in agriculture, in all of the other career and technical wow. education areas. So that's one thing I, I really like to see is the the relationship that we have in education with business and industry. Because when they leave school, they're going to go to work. Mm -hmm. And they're going to work, you know, for their, their, their lifetime. And people are living longer, and people are having to work longer whether they want to or not. So careers are even more important. Not only do you need a paycheck, but you better have something you really enjoy doing because you're going to do it for a long time. That is a, that, that's a great point. And you know, uh, when we think about Common Core, it's 
putting get kids in situations where they enjoy learning and if you enjoy what you're going to do Max Lucado wrote a book a few years ago and he, he used studies that show that 70% of Americans are unhappy with what they do right but if you can be one of those 30% that's a big deal right if you love what you do you don't ever have to work a day in your life and and loving what you do getting up excited about what you're going to do that day makes the day go faster and people who love what they do do what they do really well you want to do well and and you you will you will dave fisher does his job well had it been great getting to know him today on this administrative segment thank you for the visit dave always love to come to springdale and it's great to have him with us David Fisher is certainly an interesting guy, and he's been doing it for years in the state of Arkansas. Next, we're going to look at what's coming up on the Springdale District News Show. By 2018, 52% of jobs in Arkansas will require post-secondary education. 86,000 new jobs will be created by 2018 that will require education after high school. 26% of Arkansas's young adults ages 25 to 34 have a college degree. Is 26% enough? Two years of post-secondary education will open more job opportunities for you. Which career will you choose? One of the finest shows on SPTV is the Springdale District News Show. Sabrina's coming up to tell us what's going to be on the next program. I'm Sabrina Terrell, and on today's news, we take a look at the holiday lights in Springdale and how this year they're saving the town thousands. We'll also delve into the world of robotics as we recognize local Lego League, the Brick Hogs, for their world record. And finally, with his own record, one of SPS TV's members won first place at the National BMX Championships 2012. Thanks, Sabrina. Love watching that program, and you're going to love it too. That's going to wrap it up for today's edition. Remember, if it's happening now, it's Springdale today.